Hey everybody, it's red day again. Different red shirt, red board, and then the microphone's like a little red. And then if you um, have looked at all the books behind me, then you're well read. And also, uh, Jan's playing in the World Championship. So there you go. And so forth. Um, today we're going to look at uh, eight games. Um, four between the players and four between the players and Magnus, since he's the current world champion. And uh, I couldn't find a lot of slow games that were decisive. I'm only looking at decisive games today because I thought that'd be more fun. Um, but I couldn't find very many. Most of the games were draws. And to be fair and honest and confused, most of the games these three players played against each other were either rapid or blitz, which I guess it's not surprising anymore, but uh, that wasn't the way it used to be. So we're going to look at some rapid games, but I try to look at slow games. Trying is the first step to failure. Um, so the first two games we're going to look at, Jan won against Ding, and uh, the next two, Ding won, and then uh, the other four games are the players beating Magnus. They both beat Magnus a few times, uh, mainly in Rapid and Blitz. And I think in Ding's case, every game I found was Rapid or Blitz. So maybe I didn't find all the games. It's also possible Ding's never beaten Magnus in a slow game, which I find hard to believe. But they play so many Rapid and Blitz games with each other online and in real life compared to the number of slow games they played. And in 2020, 21, 22, uh, Ding didn't play very many slow games in real life um, with anybody. And when he did play, he was playing in China. So Ding really didn't have, uh, I think, the proper preparation for a world championship since he, his opponents have all been Chinese and for the most part weaker than he is as far as over-the-board slow play is concerned. So we'll see if that affects him during the match. The other advantage Jan has is he's played a world championship match and has all that prep from match with Carlson. Um, playing Carlson a lot in slow chess is, is good for your chess. Maybe it's not good for your confidence, but I mean, Ding the last three years played in the candidates tournament and that's about it. And uh, as you all know, um, in the last round, Ding beat Nakamura, um, and if to come in second, and if Ding hadn't won, we'd be seeing the match Jan versus uh, Hikaru. Of course, Hikaru claims incorrectly that if he had came in second, then Magnus wouldn't want Hikaru to be world champion for some reason, and and that Magnus would then play the match against Jan, and Hikaru would be out either way, which is obviously a falsehood. Um, but it's good to think that. So it was almost Jan versus Hikaru, but it wasn't. Coincidentally, currently, unless I'm wrong, which is likely, and if I am wrong, I'm going to hear about it in the chat, and I'm going to hear about it on YouTube a lot. I believe Jan and Ding are numbers two, three in the world. So that's pretty good for a world championship where the world champion is not playing, that the next two highest rated players are playing. And it's not because of their rating, it's because of how they finished in the Candidates Tournament. Now, as Raj pointed out, if Raj is his first name, um, it's not clear if Ding is his first name or if Ding is his family name. Is everybody in his family named Ding? Is everybody in his family named Liren? Or, like in some cases, like I know in India, they switch. So, like, you know... Vishy Anand, Vishwanathan, and then so forth. And I and I know since I've known Anand since before all of the chat was born, he he told me to call him Anand. He didn't he didn't care what his name was. He just said call me call me Anand or Anand, or, but but not not Vishy. I call him Vishy, but no. but he didn't want people calling him Vishwanathan. That's not how he, how he did it. Now n nobody's ever called Ding Liren Liren. Nobody said Liren did this and Liren did that. Everybody says Ding did this and Ding did that. Um, you know, they didn't say Liren, Liren, the witch is dead. They, they didn't sing that. No. 
And also, if you go to his Wikipedia, it says Jing as if it's his first name and Liren as if it's his family name. And there's like a thing over the E, like an accent. Um, yeah. Thanks, St. Louis Chess Club, for reading with a party of 66. That's funny because Route 66 on the eastern side starts in St. Louis. How did, how did they know that? Yeah. So um, I've met Zingler in more than once, but we we actually had a Rex dinner many years ago when he played in the Sinkfield Cup. And, you know, we sat next to him. And it's funny is his English wasn't very good then. It was like 10 years ago. And one of the members of the club, not, not members, one of the workers at the club, one of the employees was Chinese and spoke Chinese you know, Mandarin. And I told the chess club that, and they were like, what? I told the the people who were the higher ups of the chess club, you know, because they were concerned Ding's English wasn't very good. I said, well, this guy who works here speaks Chinese. And they went, oh, he does? You think they'd know that? Cause Ding's... So he, he actually got to go to dinner with us um, because he could, you know, speak to Ding. And it turned out in a the chances of this are 0%, but it still happened. Like the chances of winning the lottery are 0%, but somebody wins. The chances of this happening are 0%, but it did happen. They're from the same town in China. They grew up in the same town. I mean, it's more likely I grew up in the same town as Ding. So you can call him Ding or Lirin, but through practical use, nobody calls him Lirin. Maybe in China they do. They're like, hey, Lirin, what's up? Um, I mean, I assume they, 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 they call him Big D, but, you know, I don't know. Now, Nipo Nishi is even worse, so we call him Yan, which is also worse because the Americanized British version is, is Ian. Or if you watch Seinfeld a lot, Ian. Ian. By the way, there's this, a, a sports announcer who does basketball games. Um, I think it's for ESPN, but it could be for something else. And his name is the same as Jan's name. And he pronounces it Ian. Ian? What? Also, I'm not kidding. That's, it's pronounced Ian. Okay, but, but Grandmasters pronounce his name Jan. I call him Nipo, which doesn't make any sense, but it's a lot easier than saying Nipomnishi. Um, I think Palm is where the accent is, Nipom Nishi. And also, you know, Yan and, and so forth. So there'll be Yan and Ding, or Nipo and Ding, or the two guys who are playing in the world championship, and so forth. Now, a lot of people, including Kasparov, don't think this is really a world championship since the world champion's not playing and he's the best player. And that's not what the world championship is. The world championship is the world championship. That's what it is. It doesn't say who's the highest traded player and who's the world champion. If the world champion doesn't want to play. They didn't play. Fisher didn't play. Kasparov didn't play short under feeding auspices. And sometimes people don't want to play. Alakine died. Good excuse. So it's still a world championship because that's what it is. It just turns out the best player in the world and the world champion is not playing. That's, you know, not, that's not uh, necessary. Um, this probably won't determine who the best player in the world is, but it'll determine who the world champion is. And back in the 50s and 60s, it was common that the world champion lost the match and then won the rematch. Botvinnik never won a world championship match as world champion. And... World champions never won their matches. When, when Smyslov beat Botvinnik, Botvinnik was a world champion. Then when Smyslov was the world champion, he lost, and so forth. Then when Tall won, he wasn't. Then when he lost, he was. And Basically, the world champion always lost, and occasionally there were some draws. There was a Smyslov draw and a Bronstein draw. And when Lasker was the world champion near the end of his reign, I don't think he was the best player in the world. Um, and Steinitz also wasn't the best player at the world at the end of his reign. Um, Alakine was probably never the best player in the world. So you don't have to be the best player in the world to be world champion, but it's, it's, it's good to do that. It's helpful. It doesn't hurt. 
Anyway, more important than, you know, the perfunctory, you know, he's better than he is and who's who's the favorite and why is it Magnus playing and I don't want to watch this match and I hate everybody and I'm going to throw in some anti-trans stuff for no reason. Instead of all of that, we can just look at some chess games. Now, unfortunately, for those of you who are watching in America, which is most of my audience, the games start Eastern time at 5 a.m. and then on the West Coast at 2 a.m. So it's not going to be easy to watch. I'm not going to do live commentary. If you want to see live commentary, you can, I think. Um, Chess.com has it and Fide has it. But Fide is very bad at um, getting their product up to the public. So I would assume they're going to have internet problems and they won't know how to put it online and it's going to be ridiculous. Um, the players are good, but Fide is such a bad organization they can't really advertise the event properly or show it properly. So probably watching it on chess.com is better. Chess.com has like eight commentators. Uh, the best one being Fabiano Caruana. The, the FIDE commentary team is uh, Anand Dubov and for some reason Irina Crush. Um, so those players are also good. Um, but, you know, it'd be nice to watch Fabi's analysis. And Naradinsky's analyzing, and David Howell, and Hess, and three other people I forgot. Whoever those people are, they're good, whoever they are. But I'm sure Fabi will have the best, you know, opening preparation analysis of the players. Now, players are different in styles, which makes for a good match. Uh, Dinglerin likes solid, equalizing play with White, and getting an advantage. I'm sorry, with black. I said white. Sorry. With black, he likes to play solid and equalize and eventually outplay his opponent. And with white, he likes to get a small advantage and impress. Uh, very much in the style of, I guess, world champion Anatoly Karpov. And Jan likes to mix it up and play novelties that are interesting and get double-edged positions that are very complex and typically, Jan plays faster than Ding. Jan plays too fast sometimes, and sometimes that hurts him. Also, Ding seems like he has a steady head. He's not up and down a lot, and Jan seems the opposite. When Jan's winning, he's on fire, he's playing great, he's confident. And when he's losing, he goes into a tailspin and keeps playing badly and too fast and chokes on his own rage. So the question is, I guess what's going to happen the first three or four games. If, you know, Jan's ahead two and a half half, then he's a good front runner. If Ding's ahead two and a half half, Jan, Jan could just lose all the games. Because Jan, Jan doesn't like to be behind. And Ding's pretty solid. So it'll be a really interesting match because styles are pretty disparate, I think. And players are pretty good too. And I guess I give a slight edge before the match to Jan simply because he's played in a world championship before. If the last world championship had Ding playing Carlson, then I would give him the advantage because I think that's advantageous playing in one before. Tournaments held in Kazakhstan, glorious country Kazakhstan, and it starts tomorrow. Or in some cases, like if you're in Europe or Asia, it starts today. So there you go. If you're watching on YouTube... After the fact, it started a couple of days ago. So there you go. Is Nepo going to get up and leave after every move? Probably. Yeah, but I think if Jan is up two and a half half, I don't think Ding's going to play badly the next 10 games. I think if Ding's up two and a half half, Jan's like, uh, Jan's done. So, yeah, obviously they're the favorite, but Jan needs a good start, and Ding wouldn't mind a few draws, win or a loss here and there. But Jan, Jan needs to win right away. I hear, yeah, Giri, that's right. Uh, Giri, Danya, Caruana, Hess, David Howell, and two other people are the commentators for chess.com. Um, and then... 
Yeah, I and Eagle, that's correct. Thanks, Lawful Waffle. Thanks, Fem Vingle, for 300 bits. Chess 300. Eh, that's close. Is Geary funny URL? I assume you mean IRL. But URL is a funny typo. Yes, Geary's funny in real life and on the internet. Under real life. Yeah. Ian has been more consistent. Oh, I thought she meant Ian Eagle. I mean, Ding didn't play a lot in 2021 and 2022. He played a tournament in China, but he was playing much weaker players. He wasn't playing the top five players in China. He was playing Rufus and Doofus mainly just to get his rating official for the candidates tournament. Basically, China wouldn't let him leave because of COVID. COVID? What opening are we going to see in the match? Um, you know, whichever ones the players play. Now, Karen's not feeling well. She's not going to join us today. She's had a fever. I assume it's a fever for the world championship match. No. And she's been feeling nauseous and so forth. Listening to Beastie Boys makes her nauseous. And um, I guess you'll feel better tomorrow or Monday. And I'm not going to do live commentary because I'll be asleep. But I will do recaps of the games, um, Gotham chess style, except mine will be good. So that's, you know. But most people like Gotham chess better so they can watch that. And some people even like a Gadmidor better. So it's, it's all good. There'll be lots of recaps from different people if you can call us people. Now, I have some bad news. I went to the Braves game last night with Archer and the Braves lost. <laughs> that was my first Braves game, my first time at Truist Park. Nice park. We had seats behind home plate. We were in the third deck, so we were really high up. But, I mean, behind home plate's pretty good. We were slightly on the, from the batter stance, the left side of home plate. I mean, if you see what I'm saying. So, like, if I'm sitting here... Home plate's like, instead of straight, it's like home plate was there, which is the opposite for you. So, although, no, that's how, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. So don't forget it. So Those pretty good seats. I took pictures and put them on Twitter. We were down 3-0, then we tied it up. Then we were down 4-3, then we tied it up. Then we were down 5-4 and we didn't tie it up. And then our pitchers were like our worst pitchers. If you said who were the Braves' worst pitchers, that's who pitched last night. The relievers and the starter. The starter was sent down to AAA today. God damn. That'll teach him to lose. He also lost his first game and gave up like seven runs. So he's... Yeah. Now he gets to pitch with Rufus and Doofus. The truth hurts. Anyway, it was cold. It was like 59 degrees and windy. It was unfortunate. Go Morton. Morton will pitch today if the game's not rained out. Also, our, our best or second best pitcher, I think he's our second best. I think Spencer Strider's our best pitcher. Our, our best or second best pitcher is out injured for two weeks. And uh, our center fielder, who bats about 300, uh, he's also out. He also has an injury. So that's unfortunate for the next couple of weeks and so forth. Yeah, Harris is out. Harris the second. Fen Beingle, 200 bits. I have to switch to fire to go outside and watch the sun go down. What? Okay. Alligators can't can't analyze chests. If you don't think so, that's a crock. Xenoid, 400 bits. I ordered food today from a vegan place, and the deliverer of the food, who doesn't work at the store, um, was also vegan. And I said, my son's name is Bort, and they said, my son is also Bort. So I was surprised.
He's the sole mod. Why do I only have one or two mods all the time? Sometimes we have thousands of people. Like in five minutes, we'll have 3,000 people. I didn't know you have a son. I have a son and a daughter. And my wife has a son and a, uh, two sons that aren't mine. So it's the Brady Bunch around here. Thanks, Sir Percival, for 600 bits starting the train. Thanks, Sven Beingold. Go, Ben. I'll stay. All right. I wouldn't bet on the world championship because it's a 50-50 venture. You'll lose the VIG. I have, I actually, about three weeks ago, I added like six more mods and we still don't have any mods. Like we have like 20 mods on this channel <clears throat> and usually there's two or three watching or, or less. Sometimes there's zero. I mean, 20 mods seems like enough because... Some of the mods, you know, get power hungry and start acting crazy. So we don't want to have too many mods. Etc. Is Magnus turning to poker? Magnus just finished a chess tournament. So no. Magnus is turning into somebody with very long hair. The more you ban people, the more I'll make you a mod. I'm going to start the game analysis when we're on Chess TV so that most of the viewers don't miss it. Then you can watch it later on, on uh, YouTube, obviously, frankly. Until then, let's go hype train. Somebody do exclam stats. What Fem Beingold's the best? Who said Fem Beingold wasn't good? Uh, okay, so we're seven subs short of thirteen hundred. A couple of days ago, somebody gave one hundred subs. God damn, that was good because we need those subs. Go Karen Chess. Yeah, Juice. Deuce nine off. Deuce nine two. Nine, whatever it is, you give a hundred subs. The dogs did not eat dinner, Karen, but they had lunch about three o'clock. So you could feed them now or you could wait half an hour or so. They had a late lunch. Yeah, Magnus' hair is crazy like Fox News. By the way, I was on CNN on the internet today. And one of the articles was about the world championship and the headline was Magnus isn't playing. Then they talked about the other players. And then what they should have done was have most of the article about Magnus's hair, but they didn't do that. That's bad reporting. They had a picture of Magnus with his hair. So. Etc. We should be on chess TV in two minutes. And so on. So hopefully the official coverage exists. Um, I don't trust Fide very much. That's Anon, Dubov, and Crush. And then the chess.com uh, uh, commentary that's live is going to be Geary, Naraditsky, Caruana, Hess, David Howell, etc. Mainly etc. There's also people I forgot, but I don't remember who they were. They're pretty good. How's my head-to-head -head against Magnus? I played Magnus one rapid game on the internet in the world, in the uh, Pro Chess League. And I lost, but our team won. And their team cheated. The guy who later became the president of the, Nor of the Norwegian Chess Federation cheated against me and won. And then several years later said, yeah, I cheated in that match. Since he lost his first three games and beat me, I assume he was cheating against me. Otherwise, what kind of cheating is that if he cheated and lost? It was the last game of the match, too. And he, so he won, but we still won the match quite handily. He used an engine. He said he did. He was the president of the Norwegian Chess Federation. And he said, I cheated using an engine in the match. I'm not making it up. The truth hurts. That was a huge thing here in Norway. He, he didn't say he cheated against me. 
but he said, I cheated in the pro chess league match in this year and he lost all his games and he beat me. So I assume it was against me. He beat the hell out of me too. He played, I didn't, I never thought he was cheating. I just thought I got the hell beaten out of me. I didn't care much because our team won. Thanks, Point Gallus, for 500 bits. Yeah, people online cheat a lot. It's unfortunate. That's possible. Well, I think since his team was behind and he was 0 and 3, he felt cheating was important. Although it was the final, it was the finals. So I mean, you know, that was a big time to cheat. Has anyone ever cheated against you OTB or strongly suspected it happened? Um, well, nobody's ever been caught cheating against me and forfeited, but I'm not only strongly suspect it happened, I'm sure it's happened. It's more than it's more than strongly suggests, uh, you know. I've played thousands of rated games, so I'm sure I've been cheated against 10, 20 times. You know, people cheat. What are you going to do? Yeah, I heard there were two people involved, him and somebody else, and they had an engine. And I don't think it was the guy telling him moves. I think it was an engine, and the guy was using the engine and telling him. I don't, I don't think it was just like somebody good at chess helping him. But I don't know. I guess in Norway they know. Like how Gata is sure? Well, God is right. People cheat on the internet. <clears throat> it's just that Gata thinks like half of his opponents are cheating. And I think like in tournament play, 10 to 20 people have cheated out of like 3,500 games I've played. I mean, God is right about some of them. Some of them are cheating. Just probably not most of them. It seems like nobody's dominating chess. Everybody's about equal at the top. I mean, there's there's been like 10 different number twos the last 10 years. Has anyone above 2750 ever cheated? Sure. Oh, I have specific examples. Yeah. But I can't just say this guy was cheating. I, I told my friends that. I said this, this guy was cheating. But he's still cheating. There's, there's two American players who I think cheat all the time. One's a GM and one's an IM. And I think they're cheating all the time. I, I have no evidence that Gotham Chess has cheated. If it's been proven he cheated and he was punished, that wouldn't shock me. But I have no evidence of that. It's There's very few people that it would shock me if they cheated. Thanks, Mark, for gifting a sub. Um, Hikaru would shock me. Magnus would shock me. Fabi would shock me. And that's about it. I would be mildly surprised if a lot of GMs were shown as being cheaters, but I would be totally shocked if it was Magnus, Hikaru, or Fabi. There's probably other people too that would shock me, like Bartholomew, Rosen. The Dusty Duke gave five subs. Hooray! Mama Jarov never seems to have good tournaments online. He seems to be very wishy-washy. So there's no evidence that he would ever cheat. It's not like Mama Jarov's killing it online. You know, I, I beat Mama Jarov. And Mama Jarov didn't even accuse me of cheating. That's how badly I played. Top 10 players don't cheat. Uh, maybe. Well, Shanklin always gets his ass kicked online, so he's not cheating. Aronian, I would be very surprised if he was cheating. Yeah. 
Which top player would you most believe cheats? I mean, I really can't answer that um, for technical reasons. I, I have more information than you do, and it's in confidence, and I sign stuff. So I can't, you know, I can't name names. Never sign anything. High chest TV. A lot of the cheating that's going on in internet chess is by unknown people. If you start naming super famous players, then it's pretty rare. That's right. If, if Jesus is really helping Wesley, that's, I don't think that's allowed. Although on the other hand, you know, when Jesus was around, how good at chess could he have been? So, you know. Who's the most hated international arbiter? I don't know. Probably uh, Dave Hader. Dave told me he has the most complaints about him of all U.S. chess directors. <laughs> I think he's an international arbiter. I'm not sure. Ed Mayfield gifted a sub. Me and David Hayter are like that, son. What makes an arbiter bad? Well, when I was in the UAE playing in a tournament, the arbiters were talking really loudly to each other. And they don't know any of the rules. A lot of these big international tournaments... FIDE gives the arbiters lots of money and they're just friends of theirs. They're not, they didn't get it by earning it. You know, FIDE is a pretty corrupt organization. So if you have these big tournaments with lots of arbiters and they're well paid and they get their funding, you know, they get their airfare and hotel, a lot of them are just friends of the organizers or FIDE officials. So they're not good arbiters. They're just, you know, friends of the people who are, make those decisions. So those are bad arbiters. Bad arbiters make a lot of noise, don't know the rules, make bad rulings. There's a lot of those. Yay, 1,300 subs. Thanks, Mepex. 1,301. Even though it's 1,301, but I won't say that. Is OTB cheating by going to a bathroom and checking a phone? Um, that's one way to do it. A lot of times they just have stuff on them. They got some equipment and they have a friend or they don't have a friend or they have an enemy. And they obviously go into the bathroom with your phone's a good way to cheat. Yeah, the Arbiters like Nepo a lot. That's true. Are there such a thing as Arbiter certification? Yes. There's many different levels of Arbiter. Do I like Queen, the, the, the group? Yes. He's banned in his children's children. I'm not sure what Raz's punishment was. They better not make a new title because I'm a GM. I don't want to be a better title than mine. That make me look worse. The world championship starts in 10 hours. All right, let's look at some games. Hi, Chess TV people. I'm Ben. Karen's not feeling well today. She might be hanging out in the chat. Okay, this game was played between Jan and Ding in the candidates tournament in 2020. Jan has white. And it was our Spanish Rui Lopez. We we probably see this in the match, would be my guess. K 
okay, so it's the solid, slow variation. D3 is um, probably taken over from C3, which is the old, or Ricky 1, I should say. Ricky 1 was the most common move in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Nowadays, you know, they take, they play D3, they play Knight C3. They play Ricky 1 also, but... Okay, D3, not uncommon now. B5. The idea is... White wants to take this and take this, but his e pawn's hanging. So when he plays d3 or rook e1, black has to do something about bishop takes and knight takes. So he plays b5, d6, and white's playing very slow and methodical. Bishop e6, b4. And it looks pretty symmetrical. The difference is like there's a bishop here and a bishop here. And obviously the rooks here don't matter very much, but I'm not sure if I'd like my rook here or here, to be honest with you. Okay, so white's bishop is a little better than black's. Black's bishop is behind this wall of pawns. Bishop g5. He takes, gets the d5 square. Bam! The position's totally closed and blocked, so... White prefers to have knights over bishops. Bishop's not very active. Knight's pretty good on d5. He plays a5, letting him take the bishop because he wants to get counterplay here. Rook b2, fiancadoing his rook. And this is the kind of position where players under 2650 would probably just take this and be really happy, like me. But then you're giving up control of d5, Black can take and try to play f5. Black can play knight e7, defending f5 and g6. King h8, rook g8. So it doesn't really give white a huge advantage to take that. Looks good. Okay, he finally goes back. Never going back. c4, which is explosive. And he wants to kick out the knight with c6. That's why the bishop's on d8, stopping the knight from going to b6. Bishop controls both diagonals. White has a slight advantage because white's knight's better than black's bishop. Getting some luft. Takes, takes, kicks the knight out. The knight gets kicked out. He wants to take the knight. Oh, give me the knight. White wants to take the pawn. D5. If you take with the queen, I have bishop f6 with his skewer. <clears throat> so you have to take on d5. Notice the rook is defending the knight, so there's no free pieces anywhere. You still can't play queen takes d4 because of bishop f6. And in this position, white's obviously better because he has a passed b pawn. And black has no passed pawns. And also, these pawns seem weaker than these pawns. These pawns seem easy to defend, and this one might even promote. These pawns just seem like they're going to get attacked by the queen and knight. Okay, he put it in H. He wants to get some counterplay on the king side. Put it in H. And he puts it in B. So how's Harry doing against Barry? Where, where's Ginger GM to analyze this game? H3. The engine doesn't like the move H3. Obviously, black wants to come in on the white squares and deliver checkmate. But the engine doesn't like H3. Relieves the tension. King h1. That's the best move according to the engine. Rook b8. Rook b1. Tripling up on the bubble up. What white wants to do is play knight g1. Stopping queen f3. And putting pressure on the h pawn. And then he can win over here. Is his idea. Obviously white wants to trade queens. Because then his won't get checkmated. Now black's threatening checkmate. Queen takes d5, stopping queen f3 and taking a pawn. Sacrificing his rook, because if you take it, there's checkmate. The same thing. Queen e8 check. Knight g1, stopping queen f3. Now some of you probably thought in this position black had mate in two, even though I said queen e8 check. It's check, so you can't checkmate me. Knight g1, stopping queen f3. 
Now he sacrifices a piece. He takes it. Now he's threatening queen here, check, queen here, mate, because the knight's pit. <clears throat> also, queen here looks pretty good. White has one move that wins. White has one move that wins, and every other move loses. The truth hurts. Black's also threatening a third threat, which I didn't mention, mainly because I didn't see it, which is rook takes knight check, king takes queen d1 mate. So we got this mate, and we got this mate, and queen here is also annoying, but queen h4 check is a defense. This black king can't really escape. So white has one move that wins. Jan played it. Queen h4 check. Rook d1, f3. Never play f3. And here black resigned. And the commentator of the game that I found this on, ch on chess base, I think it was Krasenkov, but he said white resigned too early because what's going to happen is I'm going to win this pawn. You're going to win this pawn. I'm going to win this pawn, and it's hard for white to win with these two pawns, doubled isolated pawns. So it says he shouldn't have resigned here. And the way I can force you to take this and not have the perpetual pin on my knight is to play rook b4. Because then if I take this, then I can eventually go here, here, and here, obviously, and get my king out, and then you won't have won my pawn and saved yours. So after rook b4, you have to take, I take, you take, and then king g2, let's say. And the commentator of the game thought white, re white, black resigned too early. The engine doesn't agree. The engine says white's up 3.5. So here's the engine line, which was also given by the commentator. I guess he stole it from the engine. And this is more or less forced and... If white doesn't have either of his pawns, the game is a draw. If the pawn was here, it'd be a very easy win or here. But since they're doubled isolated H pawns, I agree resigning is premature, but I have no doubt that Jan probably would have won the game. And the engine says white's completely winning, but that doesn't mean it's easy to win. Just for an engine, maybe it's easy to win. So after F3 which he should never do, then black resigned. Jan doesn't go by trends. He plays F3 when he wants it. Ben Feingold, you missed fork. Knight G5, forking H6 and F3. Forking H6. What? There's a fork, hello. What? Chat ignoring king h6. Oh. Yeah, that was assumed. That variation had black playing king h6. Yeah, obviously after here, 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 there's a fork. But it's, it's actually black's move. And black would play king h6 or f6, stopping the fork, and then do this. Black actually doesn't want to take this unless he's forced to. He wants to keep this here. And the ways we can force it are by moving the rook here and taking with the rook or by trying to win this pawn, then he'll take, and I'll get to take this. Anyway, this is a, a slow game they played in the candidates in 2020, which Jan won. And as you know, Jan won that candidates, and he won the candidates in 2022, I believe. So he always wins the candidates. So there you go. Okay, that was the first game. On to game two. This is Jan's game with Ding. Uh, played in 2016. This game was played in China. And instead of playing the Rui Lopez, which we saw in the first game, Jan played D4, the Scotch. So, I mean, if I was a betting man, I would think that Jan's going to play the Rui Lopez in the World Championship match and not play the Scotch. But he might play both. Bishop C5, that's what I play. Knight C6, Queen F6 is the main move. They took with a pawn. Queen f6 is the main move. Then they either play queen d2 or queen f3. I've never played bc. Okay, just doesn't want to play queen f6. Plays knight e7. Interesting idea. Get the knight to g6. I like putting the knight on g6. 
Night A4, the two bishops, the Vatals. What? I wonder if you guys heard that. It sounded like a house fell on our house. Okay, C3, after which black was PO'd. And now he could play R2 to D2. And that's like two jokes. Okay, the engine says this is equal. The knight looks pretty silly out here. Put it in F. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this maneuver. That doesn't look right. Not too interesting. White seems slightly better. The engine says it's equal. Bishop a6. It's the boring world of Niels Bohr. In this position, I guess white was worried about bishop takes and rook takes. So he played rook b1. And he didn't get the two bishops and he has the diamond pawn structure. Again, the engine prefers white slightly because of this nice pawn center. Looks like white could get a passed a pawn later in the game. Or, or he could do it now. Okay, there's his passed a pawn. Looks like taking this way isn't very good because you give white this nice center. Good to have a pawn here and stop e5. So Jan always gets a pass queenside pawn against Ding. Even though there's only two games, that's got to be the pattern. e5, takes, takes. Bishop g5. Bishop takes looks really suspicious. I could play queen here, pinning and attacking the bishop and attacking this bishop. So I think that this just loses. The engine already says white's winning here. A5, pretty good pass pawn coming. Black has these doubled pawns. Black gets luffed. Gets his pawn back, or wins a pawn, I should say. Yeah, this just seems like a pretty smooth victory for white. Here comes the pawn. It's pawndemonium. He takes it, otherwise it's going to promote, so that seems like a good idea. Check. He takes. Ah, if he plays king g7, then I guess rook takes, attacks the queen, and then we can move our bishop away to safety. Ah, oh, that's a nice trick, bishop f2. Ding thought he attacks the queen and attacks the bishop. But the queen's not really attacked. If you take it, I can play rook takes and get my queen back. So he just saves his bishop. And here he's just up a piece for nothing, so black resigned. If bishop check, just g3 or bishop g3, they both win. A pretty smooth victory. He got a pass pawn, and he was also better in the center. It's better on the queen side. And black played knight e7 to g6 to e5 to d7 to b6 and traded off his knight. So that wasn't a very good game from Ding. Very good game from Jan. So Jan won both games in 40 moves as time trouble ended. And he was a piece up in both games. And those were both slow games. This one was played in China in 2016. So it is seven years ago. But still, it's good to beat somebody when you're, you know, international player and you're playing in their in their home country. C'est pas facile, oui? <laughs> okay, that was the second game. Now we'll look at games where Ding beat Jan. This is the third game. Um, Ding has white. You'll notice that white wins more often than black does. This was played in a rapid tournament uh, in 2019. Never play f3, and they transpose into some kind of Benoni. Jan's one of the few super GMs who will play 
really interesting with black and mix it up and not just play for solid equality like Dingwood. Pretty standard stuff. Sometimes they play h5, h4 and kick the knight. It plays knight e8, which usually means you want to play f5, but it could be he's just opening his bishop up. Rook b8 wants to play b5 or f5. They're both sacrifices, it seems. Okay, knight c7. b5 is not a sacrifice. Bishop f4 attacks the d-pawn. Queen e7. So obviously white has a nice position, and black's going to try to get counterplay by playing b5 and attacking on the queen side and gaining space there. And white has a nice center, has all his pieces out, he's castled. But the engine likes white a little bit. Rook e8, engine likes that. A5, B5, always take on Passant. Rook takes, now black has counterplay here. One of the ideas of playing knight c7 in a Benoni in this fashion is to play knight b5 and try to get to you know, win a pawn or play knight d4. So we'll see if he does that later. Rook a5, well, it's trying to stop knight b5 by getting all of his pieces defending b5. He fixes this pawn here too. But the rook here is sort of weird. You don't see a rook there very often in a Benoni. Rook b4. Knife f1. Wants to maneuver the knight to c4. Now he plays knight b5. So when the rook was here, back here, somewhere, we could just take the knight and win a pawn. But now that the rook is in front of the knight, the b pawn is attacked now. That's why he played rook b4 before he played knight b5. Now if you take this, this pawn is loose. He took back. I'm surprised he didn't take on b2, but there's probably some tactical trick. No, the, the engine says rook takes b2 is okay. Although it does play bishop takes d6. And then I'm too old for this position, so I resign. It says white's clearly better. Does queen d8? Man. Then all, all the pieces are hanging. Thanks, Mr. Floopy. Hang on, Mr. Floopy. Floopy, hang on. So this was possible. He took with the pawn. Rook takes, defends the pawn through x-ray. So now white's a pawn up. Doesn't seem like black has a lot of compensation for a pawn. Okay, so he plays crazy f5. Get some compensation. Queen c7, threatening d6. The engine doesn't like queen c7. It wants to play knight d2, defending the e-pawn. Now it says black is fine. Bishop e5. Engine hates that move. It says just take on e4. These positions are wild and crazy, and that's what Jan's going to go for in the World Championship, is positions like this when he has black. Um, and his... Thanks, Deuce916. Thanks for the sub. You're the guy who gave thousands of subs before. Thanks, Fen Bingle, for gifting a sub. Go, Deuce916. No, nobody watches hockey. Okay, so he played bishop e5. Takes, takes. Engine doesn't like bishop e5. Rook a5. He wants to come to a8 and put some pressure here. And he does. The engine says this is about equal. Rook back to a1. His rook was attacked. Fe. Fe. This position is also about equal. Rook takes e4. That's fine. Takes the knight, takes the bishop. And this, this should end in a draw. There's a lot of trading going on. And position's about equal. Rook d1. c4 is explosive. Queen c6 with a fork, attacking everything. And he plays rook f8. The engine prefers queen e2, defending the pawn and the rook. Says that's completely equal. Now it says white's slightly better, but still a draw. Bishop g4 is an excellent move. He attacks the rook. The queen can't take the bishop because queen takes f1 would be checkmate. So he plays d6, check. Rook f7, and that's not a good move. Should play queen f7, and then after queen takes, king takes, we can round up this pawn, and the game would, should end in a draw. So queen f7 would equalize. 
After rook f7, white's slightly better. Rook b1. Now, there's two moves that draw quickly, but nobody would ever see either one of them. One is bishop h3, and one's bishop f3. And the idea is if you take, I have a perpetual check. Only Shirov would play bishop h3. Instead, he played bishop e2, which looks good. Okay, but that's actually a blunder that loses the game. But it looks good. It looks like it wins. But unfortunately, it does not. This was move 37. <clears throat> so I'm going to assume Jan was in time trouble. And that if he wasn't, he wouldn't have played this because he would see that it loses. Queen c8 check. And after rook f8, it looks like you're threatening queen takes knight mate and rook takes queen and everything's good. The thing is, you're not threatening queen takes knight mate because after rook takes, your rook can't go to f1 because it's pinned. Check. Now he's threatening queen f1 with mate. Check. Knight e3. So he stopped the queen f1 mate. He's got his pass d pawn. The black king isn't very good. And the bishop isn't doing anything. And the engine just says white's winning. Black can't attack anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, if it was bug house, then black, you know, could put a piece on e, you know, knight g3, rook e1, you know, something. But, man, if it was white's move in bug house, mate, place the knight with mate. Okay, so... He played bishop f3. He's hoping for this perpetual. And here's a funny line. If you don't acquiesce to the perpetual and play knight g2, gotcha, bitch. It's the famous game, gotcha versus bitch. Oh, snap. So bishop f3 is a tricky move, but not really a big threat. He wants to take and play the same mate. So he plays h3. Now this mate that I showed you with all the gotcha bitches and oh snap. That doesn't work because I have king h2. Bishop c6. Bishop's defending and attacking. Knight d5. Bishop's not attacking anymore. Now black has more than one. I'm sorry. White has more than one move that wins. The, 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 uh, the funniest move that wins is rook b8 which he did not play. And the idea is I played knight f6 check. And if you go here, this is mate. So you have to give your queen away and then I win. But instead he played knight f6 right away, which is equally good or better. King f8. Now be careful, black threatening queen g2 mate. Check, check, draw a greet. No, not just kidding. Queen g5 stopping the mate. White's up two pawns. White's threatening queen g6 and knight e8 and d7. Rook e6. d7 threatening d8 queen. The truth hurts. And there's no checks. The queen stops all the checks in the dark squares. And we're threatening the queen. And we're up two pawns. And the g pawn is attacked. King e7, walking into the double, triple check, quadruple check. And white plays the best move. The engine announces mate here. Instead of moving the knight with check, which gives the pawn away, which also wins, knight here is winning. He played queen c5 check. That's the best move. Now the pawn's defended. So if you take the knight, I queen with check. If you play king here, I assume queen here check is the best move because we queen with check. That's correct. And if you play, you don't have any checks with black. They're, they're all covered. So I'm going to queen next move. So here Jan resigned. So actually, Jan's opening and middle game worked out okay. He got an equal complicated position. Then he just got outplayed. And he missed bishop f3 and bishop h3, which probably both draw when he played bishop e2. He was probably playing for a win. He probably thought his attack would succeed, but it did not. But that was a very complicated Benoni. That's the kind of game Jan likes, and it didn't, sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes when you play crazy chess and you're good at crazy chess, 
maybe you'll get three and a half out of six because you guys are the same rating, but you're better than them. And this is one of the six where you lose. You know, these things happen. When you play crazy chess, you lose sometimes, especially when it's unsound. This game, it seemed like it was pretty sound. Okay, next game that Ding won, Ding was white. So the Ding Nepo games that I'm showing you guys, white won every game. And in this position, Ding played the innocuous E3. This is the line in the King's Indian some GMs have been playing lately. And once again, he turns it into a Benoni. I've had white in this position before. I didn't do very well. I drew, but I was... only time I played it in a slow game, I, I didn't like it. Usually white plays E4 later and he's just down a tempo in a regular Benoni, like here. Like this is a theoretical position, but white played E4 in two moves. But I guess a lot of the top players think the Benoni is so bad that you can just lose a tempo and you have a good position. Rook B8. Same kind of stuff as last game. Yep, same pawn structure here, except the knight's not here, moving around. Knight's already on a good square, D2, we can go to C4. This game was a game played in the Chessable Masters in 2020. Group 8. Very similar to the other game. Knight B5 again, trying to get the knight somewhere. Unpins his knight. Bishop f4. The engine really likes white here because white got his knight to c4 and it can't be challenged. A lot of times, black plays either knight e5, one of his knights, or knight b6 to challenge the knight on c4. That's not happening here. The knight's going to be on c4 for a long time, putting pressure on d6 and stopping the b-pawn from moving. And black got his knight b5 and probably wants to go to d4. Rook d8, trying to defend his pawn some more so he can play knight d4. Right now his knight's defending this. Now, like, if I was playing a blitz game, I would be looking at knight takes and knight takes, but I guess bishop takes defends the pawn with the rook. That's why he played rook d8. So he played g4. Usually when I play moves like that, I lose. Knight takes c3 and bishop b5. He wants to get rid of this beautiful knight. Knight goes to e3. The engine prefers knight b6. Knight takes e4. He can't help himself. He's, he's, he's Jan. The engine doesn't like this move, but this is typical Jan style. Sack a piece, get some pawns, get some complications, etc. But the engine doesn't like it. It says this is unsound. It doesn't mean he's going to lose, but since he lost this game, it doesn't mean he's going to lose. Bishop takes c3. Actually, the engine prefers rook takes e4. Rook c1. Queen takes a5. So black has three pawns for a piece. He's got three pass pawns on the queen side. And he's threatening this. But chess engines love extra pieces. Takes, takes. Queen f3. Now he's lined up on the f file against the f pawn. And white's position is pretty good except that black has all these passed pawns, but they're not dangerous yet. Bishop d4, pinning the knight. King h1, put it in h. Queen a4 is a move to win the e-pawn, but the engine doesn't like it. The idea is to take this and then take on e4. Unfortunately, white has bishop takes d6, and you can't play rook takes because queen f7 check and queen takes e8 check. Also, you pick up this rook. Thanks, Mr. Hardbiz. So that was a miss on uh, Jan's part. F5 is a crazy move, but I mean, yeah, it says F6 and F5 are the best moves. Yeah, Queen A4 is a pretty bad move. What it wants him to do is play Queen A3, stopping Bishop takes D6. Although I guess you could play Bishop takes D6. Queen takes E3, Queen F7. No, that seems okay for black. Yeah, the idea is your bishop's defending your knight, so you can't move your bishop to d6. Now you can. This pawn's hanging. I have a pass d pawn. Queen f7's winning. Okay, so he played f5. Bishop takes c5, and now white's just up a piece. Black doesn't really have enough for it. Yeah, 
Yeah, he has a pawn for a piece. That's not good against Ding. He at least two pawns for a piece. And he resigned here because he's in Wang Chung. Everybody Wang Chung tonight. I asked Ding after this game because I spoke to him. I said, was your opponent in Wang Chung? And he said, we, we prefer to say Wang Chung. And I was like, all right. So now if you move the king, you lose your pawn. And this pawn is stopped and so forth. Take it on passant. So Jan sacked a piece, didn't get enough compensation. Then he was down a piece and he lost. So when Jan wins, it looks good. He sort of runs over his opponent. And when he loses, he plays double edge, crazy chess, and then it doesn't work out and he loses. And that's what I expect to see in the world championship. It's like Jan's match. Jan can play badly and lose, or Jan can play great and win. And Ding's just going to play solid. And it depends which one of those styles you like. Really active, crazy, exciting chess. Or like a rock. And it's similar... To Karpov Kasparov matches in the 80s and 90s, except the players aren't as good. Otherwise, it's a similar clash of styles. Now, these players not only play each other in the world championship, but they've played the reigning world champion several times, Magnus Carlsen. And so I wanted to show games they won against Magnus. Um, coincidentally, Jan's games, he was black where he beat Magnus. Um, he beat Magnus several times. These are the ones I found. And Ding beat Magnus with white. And the only games I could find Ding winning were actually rapid and blitz games. But that could be more my fault than anybody else's. Now, this game was played in Tata Steel 2011. I think that's the tournament that, that Akaru won. I think. Unless he won in 2010. I thought it was 2011. I don't know. Pretty sure it was 2011. Um, and this is the game Magnus played against Jan. Magnus is white. And they played very sharp, complicated Knight of Sicilian. I'll flip the board because that'll make you guys mad and because Jan was black. Mainly to make you guys upset. Got to do something. Okay, so they played a Knight Orf. Jan likes to play sharp. And he castled king's side. It's more exciting when they castle queen side, but what are you going to do? Put it in H. And this is just theory. Engine says black is fine. Takes on F4 instead of taking immediately. Takes with the rook. He wants his bishop on E3 and his rook here because he's probably going to try to play knife F5. And his bishop is really nice on this diagonal. And if his knight gets in here, you know, rook's going to be good on the f-file. Stopping like rook e8, bishop f8 ideas, trying to keep the rook, you know, here. Because after rook here, bishop here, we put a lot of pressure on the e4 pawn. Okay, so he plays knight e5. That's the advantage you have of taking this is you get e5 for your knight. Queen d4. And now the players play knight c6, queen d1, draw agreed. No, that's just what the engine does. Knight c6, queen d2. Magnus obviously doesn't want to draw with white. The engine does want to play queen d4 here and draw. It thinks that white should do that. Queen d2. And he took on b5, playing for the win. And he played rook e1. Very strange move, putting his rook behind everything. The engine doesn't like it. It says, boo, boo. Now, this was in 2011. And I would say in 2011, Magnus uh, wasn't fully Magnus yet. You can see he's only 2814. Normally, his rating is above 2850. <clears throat> Magnus wasn't even world champion when this game was played. Ridiculous. Knight g6, attacking the rook. If the rook moves off this pawn, we can take it. Luckily, Magnus has this this pawn here. He probably saw he might lose his e-pawn and thought his rook would be good on the open e-line here. So he played b4. He wants to take the pawn for free and not give up his b-pawn. The engine really likes black here. 
<coughs> uh, you can't play queen takes b4 because your knight's hanging. So he took this first, then took on b4. Now material is equal, and white has a passed b pawn, but black has really good control of the center and a really nice bishop here. The knights are pretty nice also. And the engine really hates white's position due to one particular move, which Jan found. Um, this is good here if we can put pressure on g2, and white is going to stymie the pressure with bishop f3. But bishop, knight h4, you know, that makes bishop f3 look worse, and now we really get serious pressure here. So the engine really hates white here and says he should play bishop f3 anyway. And he did. Not an easy move to play, because now this bishop is really strong. Let's see, gf I would, I would never play. It says they're the same. It says gf and rook f3 are both really good for black. Now, black has one move here that gives him the advantage. And I would assume if I had the white pieces, I would not see this move. And if I had the black pieces, I would also not see this move. But I especially wouldn't see it with white. So I'm guessing that Magnus just missed this move. And that's why he went into this line. And the move is queen d7. So we're getting out of this pin. And the idea is if you take... I have rook a4, that's why queen d7, and I'm taking here on e4, opening up the line to your king. And this is by far the best move. So Jan's really good when it's tricky. Now the engine doesn't take this. It says boo, boo. It says after rook here, white has to sacrifice his queen. Let's see if white doesn't sack his queen. I'll make a queen move. Then it says maiden four, check, check. Check and mate. I would repeat, of course, and then play mate. So queen d7, excellent, stopping f takes e. Bishop f4, engine agrees. Rook a4. And obviously, this position is terrible for white. Frankly, terrible. I'm going to play queen h3 and so forth. So queen takes d6 is no good because of queen h3, and which is what he played. The engine wants to play bishop g3. It's a hard move to play. He played queen g4, also good. Now the only move that doesn't lose immediately is knight d4. And he played it. Rook takes d4, always sack the exchange. Bishop f3, always sack the exchange. Always repeat. And he played queen c8. So he's playing for a win, even though black has, white has two passed pawns, because the king is so exposed. And usually in the queen and rook endings, when there's major pieces on the board like this, the passed pawns don't compensate for the exposed king. Exposed king is important. Now, the engine doesn't like queen c8 as much as it likes rook c8. Queen f2, the engine actually prefers bishop g5, attacking the knight. Check, knight e4, rook e8, nice knight on e4, gets luft, here comes the attack, nice solid knight on e4, yep, Magnus gets his pawns going, here comes the attack, and it's the shack attack, attacking the rook. Attacking c2. Nice knight on e4. Magnus sacks the exchange because always sack the exchange. You can't play rook takes c2. I mean, you can legally do it. Because bishop d2, and now if you take, you lose your rook. So the engine says you have to take this. Rook takes, queen takes, pawn takes here. And it says this is a draw. So he takes on e4, rook g6, wants to play queen g1 mate at some point. Bishop g3, that stops mate. And the engine just says black's winning here. It says this is just technique because the white king is so exposed. Threatening mate. Chomp, chomp, chomp. 
Chomp, chomp, chomp. See, black's winning because black can sack the exchange and white can't. Because that's a big advantage when you're up the exchange. Just like on TV, white plays check and then black plays check. And he wants to play bishop f8 and takes, but Jan didn't allow that. Now we're going to go here and take. So he resigned. And in this position, we want to keep this pawn here. So... He's not going to play here takes, which is winning, but it's not easy. Um, when the pawn's here and here, it actually isn't winning. So he's going to play king g5 and take. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't allow king g5 in this position, um, he's just going to take the bishop because the rook stops the pawn. But even if he didn't, he could play g6, and he he doesn't want um, he doesn't want to have or g5, I should say. He doesn't want to have an H pawn. He wants to have a G pawn. But okay, here I can just take the bishop. So after rook D7, um, for example, if he had played here, H6, this isn't easy to win. Very difficult to win. It is winning, just not easy. So he, that's why he played rook D7 to avoid that end game. Just going to take the bishop or else take with the king. Then with the G pawn, it's really easy to win. So after rook D7, Magnus resigned. And he decided... He would no longer play for the world. Oh, wait, this is in 2011. So this is before Magnus was world champion. We... Okay, in the next game, Jan won. He was also black. This was in 2020. In the Legends of Chess prelim, probably rapid. This game was played two and a half years ago. Jan plays the modern, the Pierce, whatever you want to call it, something. Oh yeah, Jan's black, so I want to flip the board. I've played this way with white. I don't like it. Bishop h5, trapping his own bishop. And Magda says thank you, because he's very polite. Sacks a piece. Now, I would recommend playing this way because it's not very good. Thanks, Fen Bingle, for gifting a sub. But it's tricky, and if two engines are playing, white's going to do very well. But Jan likes tricky. So he's definitely going to get a third pawn for his piece, and he's hoping that white has an exposed king. But it's hard for black to attack because black doesn't have any pieces to attack with. Now, the engine here doesn't want to give up a third pawn and plays the move d5. Bishop e2 is also a good move. He played bishop e2. I guess if you take this, I take, and your bishop's hanging, so you can't do that. Rook c8. I mean, he's just down a piece for two pawns. And he has some compensation, but the engine doesn't think enough. a3, stopping knight b4. d5 is good. Bishop f3. Knight f3. And this looks like a game Magnus would usually win up a piece and nebulous compensation. So far, he's playing great. Knight g5 is also the best move, attacking the queen. Queen h4. And in this position, uh, this is where Magnus makes his first mistake of the game. Now, probably Magnus didn't play NH3 because it smells. And he didn't want to smell that. NH3, terrible. And he played King G2, which is a mistake. His only mistake of the game so far. And now we have tricks based on this. If you see what I'm saying. I see what I'm saying because the engine's telling me that. <clears throat> so now the position should be a draw. He played Bishop F6. The engine prefers rook takes c1 and says it's a draw. But after bishop f6, Magnus has a crazy move here, which he did not play. I can't imagine anybody playing it. It's knight h7. I'm guessing both players missed that. If you take if you don't take it, then I, you know, that's great. If you take with the king, I play rook h1. 
And if you take with a queen, which is correct, I still play rook h1, you play bishop h4, and I play bishop g5. And this is forced. And white, it says, is slightly better. It says you should play king g3 to play f4. F4 is a good move if you can play it. If you don't play f4, then black should be fine. But yeah, you can't stop f4. So white sh white's going to be clearly better here. Okay, but Magnus instead played rook h1 first. And this fails to a very nice move. And it's easy to find these moves because always sack the exchange. It's also easy to find because the queen's trapped. So we don't really have any queen moves. So Jan played rook takes c1. And now black is actually better. But the engine really hates that move and wants to take with the queen and get the same kind of position, but with the rook not on h4. Yeah, this seems, I guess, yeah, Magnus wanted to put his rook over here. So black has two pawns and a knight for the rook. You can't play f4, and the knight's really good. I have a passed h pawn, and the engine says black has a big advantage. Rook c3, that's what I would play. The engine hates it. And, you know, black's rook just can't do anything. The knight's here forever, and we just start pushing our pawns and moving our king up. And the rook just has nowhere to go. There's no reason why the rook's better than the knight. Magnus goes crazy because he's got to do something. Rawr! Magnus gives all his pawns away for a little more. And Magnus has no pawns. And the truth hurts. Thanks for raiding Moving with Matt. You're the best. Give him a shout out. This actually reminds me of my game with Tony Miles, where I had Rook Bishop, or I had Rook Knight and four against two Rooks. <clears throat> so if this was a Rook and this was a Rook, that would be the material. My, my pawns were all connected, though. I won pretty easily. That was one of my best games. And this is just an easy win. With two pawns, it's a draw. Three pawns, just an easy win. Always repeat. And truth hurts. I like the way Jan's having fun. And here Magnus resigned because G4 check is coming. And, all right. It's becoming silly now. So very nice win from Jan. He sacked a piece. A little bit unsound. Probably it was a rapid game. And then he tricked him with Rook C1. Got into a winning endgame and had pretty good technique. And again, that's the way Jan likes to play. It might not be sound. It might be sound. Here it maybe wasn't as sound. But his opponent has to prove it, and he's not playing an engine, although some people think Magnus is an engine. But Magnus is less of an engine when it's rapid. So he had compensation because of the time control. Also, Jan's pretty good. Okay, those were the two games I show that Magnus lost to Jan. Now we'll see Dingler in beating Magnus. Um, this is probably my favorite game of the eight that I'm going to show today, because, uh, I mean, Magnus got run over by a bus. And usually, if Magnus loses, he makes a one-move blunder, or he loses in 95 moves where both sides had chances. But here, Magnus loses like the way I would. Like, he just gets run over like he doesn't belong in the... He, he should go to some other tournament and play weaker players. That's not easy to do. That's not how Magnus usually loses. <clears throat> okay, this was the Carlson Invitational, too. I'm not kidding. The name of the tournament is the Carlson Invitational. So maybe he won't invite Ding anymore. Ding plays E4 and D4, so it's tough to predict when Ding is white what the opening is going to be. Jan, for the most part, just plays E4, but he can play D4 or C4. He literally doesn't care. Okay, Magnus played uh, unusual opening, trying to get Ding out of his prep. Plays knight c6 on move one. And Ding is like, no, 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 let's let's play Rui Lopez. I know that. And he plays d5. 
This doesn't have a good reputation, but it's in the style of Jan. So Magnus was happy. It's like a bad Scandinavian. And that's saying something because the Scandinavian. And it turns out Ding actually played a novelty late in the game. Probably he didn't know the opening. He just, you know, figured he'll play something. This has all been played before. Even this has been played before. And in this position, he played a novelty. It said Rook D3 had been played before. And Ding played Rook G1. Same idea, get the Rook over here. But this is quicker, if you see what I'm saying. So obviously, White's King is safer than Black's. Both sides have bad pawn structures. And I figured <clears throat> Magnus played this way because he figured this isn't Ding's kind of position. It's too complicated. The king's exposed. Pawn structures are no good. And I'm just going to outplay Ding. And that, that didn't happen. Okay, he has to play h6 to stop rook g5, and he did. Rook g8, that's not a fun move to play. He wanted to move his bishop out, I guess, but his g-pawn's attacked. The engine really hates this move, rook g8. Knight e4, here comes the shack attack, or as it's known in China, the ding attack. God damn. This looks like what I'm black in a one-minute game. Yeah, I mean, black is, just has no safe place for his king. So he's just getting crushed here. He gets a pawn for his troubles. Now, what's funny is Ding's move is the second move by the engine. The engine move, which if you play would prove you're an engine, is d5. God damn. Yeah, if somebody plays d5 against you, they're probably cheating. Because the knight's hanging and knight d2 is just a nice safe way to get your knight over to e5 or a5. Text the queen. This sacrifices the pawn to three different pieces and the knight. And the engine's like, that's my move, d5. Okay, he played knight d2, which is the human move. Magnus gets pawns for his trouble, but he's got too much trouble. There's just too much trouble here. King e8, god damn. Knight e5, the truth hurts. Knight takes c6, everything wins for white. Rook a8, setting up for the next game. Now, if we play queen b5 or queen a4 for a discovered check, black can castle again. You can't castle now because then white would play knight e5 mate. Also, knight b8 is mate. That mate I missed. Knight b8 mate. Hmm, good mate. Okay. So he played queen b7, king d7, defending his rook, knight e5 check, god damn. King e7, bishop f4, attacking the queen by sideways, knight check, bishop takes d6, c takes his illegal, and then he goes back to e5 again. Man, the truth hurts. Spite check, always play king b1. Now you'll notice this is attacked, which is irrelevant. What's relevant is queen c6 check. God damn. Also queen b4 check. And he played rook gf8, Magnus did. Then Magnus resigned. Queen b4 is made in five. And queen c6 takes longer to make because after king here takes, you have knight d7 and your king can run out. It still announces mate, but this is instant mate. This he, he resigned here, but after queen here check, c5, queen c5 mate. So king d5, x clam. Now the quickest way to mate, and I'm not kidding. This is no joke. I would never make a joke like this. If your opponent played the quickest way to mate here, that means they're cheating. Because nobody would ever think of this move. Never play f3. That stops king e4, so it threatens queen here mate and c4 mate. Now there's other ways to mate, like rook e1 with the same idea. So anyway, after rook gf8, he resigned. 
Now, Magnus usually doesn't get beat like that, where his king is running around, and he's playing rook g8, rook f8, rook d8, rook a8. His queen's taking irrelevant pawns on the king's side, and he's just getting mated. Very bad loss. If I put, like, on a, you know, what do you call it? A cap score, you know, he probably just played terrible, frankly. So you don't mess around with Ding, because Ding will punish you. He'll send you to your room without supper. Okay, here's another game that didn't last very long that ended in checkmate. So Ding's white against Magnus. Magnus plays the King's Indian or the Grunfeld. King's Indian. It's one of the main lines. B6 looks like a very strange move to me. Not a fan of B6. Knight h4, put it in h. Always play e takes f5. Now if you play knight takes f5, I can take on g6. So you either have to take with the pawn or play g5 and then take with the knight. He took with the pawn. Thanks for it, says Steinitz. Hello. Queen c2. Now we can't move either of these pieces because the pawn's under attack. Knight f6, defending the pawn again. b4, bishop d7, c5. So white's crashing through on the queen's side and center, and black is sort of jumbled up in his pieces here. The engine doesn't like black's position, which it usually doesn't in the king's Indian. Now he plays e4, c6, bishop goes back. f3, never play f3. This pawn is attacked more times than the number of atoms in the universe. The universe only has four atoms. Man, the truth hurts. So the center's crumbling. I have winning on the queen's side. And your pieces are all passive and jumbled here. Very bad position for Magnus. This was played in the Carlsen tour again in the finals. Gets a pawn for his troubles. White gets the pawn back. Now he's threatening the knight on d5. Black's king is a little open too. Knight c3 with a fork. And now you will know Ding's name is the Lord when he plays bishop takes h6. The obvious idea is if you take the bishop, I play queen takes knight. Then white just wins a pawn. Um, now, of course, we could try to win material. We could play knight takes rook on b1. Then we go bishop here check. The king goes to h8. If king here, this is mate. God damn. King has to go to h8, obviously, frankly. Then we sack on e8 because we want to play knight g6, and the bishop was defending that. Queen takes e8, knight g6 check. If king takes, knight takes rook check on f8, and then if king g8, I check. And then queen takes bishop as mate, irre irrespective of which way you go. So you have to go takes this. Queen g6 is it mate because it's covered. Queen h7 check. Queen here check. Queen f4 mate. And something like that actually happened. So he didn't take the rook. He played queen f6. Check. Rook takes e8. Very similar to what I was just showing you. Knight g6. Knight, knight check. And in this position, Magnus blunder with king takes bishop. It doesn't matter. Cage Bruno and Fen Beingold gave 200 and 300 bits. Now, if you play the correct move, king here, and then after this, <clears throat> it's actually better to play king f7. If you take, I check, attacking your queen, and then I check and I win your queen. And it's going to be made soon because the engine says so. So you have to actually play king f7 in this position, and then white wins by playing rook f1. And black's king can't handle the truth. If knight e2 check, I just play king g2. So Magnus got mated instead. It's the same mate I just showed you. Mate. 
The difference is Black didn't get to play Knight Takes Rook and be up more material. But it's the same eight. <clears throat> so there's two games where Ding crushed Magnus. We saw two games where Jan beat Magnus. Then we saw games they beat each other, Ding and Jan. There's a lot of decisive games, mainly due to the fact that they've played lots of Blitz and Rapid. A lot of chess is Blitz and Rapid now. So you see Magnus lose more games as a consequence. In slow chess, Magnus doesn't lose very much. And these guys draw a lot when they play each other. But when they play in Rapid and Blitz, then Jan and Ding have more decisive results. So that was uh, interesting games that they won. This game was played in 2020. And again, most of the time, or all the time, when Ding beats Carlson, it's in Rapid or Blitz. And you can see this didn't work out well for, for Magnus. But it shows you how strong the players are and that either one will be a deserving world champion even if Magnus is better than them. Obviously, they're capable of beating him in any, any one game. Do you take one move per seven-day challenges? Ugh, that's the worst thing I ever heard of. Go hype train. The hype train is crushing it. Go the hype train. People of the world, join in. Join the hype train. If you guys have any questions, you can put in the chat, um, you know, about the match, about Ding and Jan. Um, my opinion is it's 50-50. One of them will win, but I don't know which one. As far as I know, it's a 14-game match. If it's 7-7, seven, seven, they'll play some rapid playoff. Craft Single Square subscribed to Tier 2. Wow. I'm glad I wore like a long sleeve shirt for tier two. Will Jan break if a game go? Uh, yes. Who's the favorite in rapid? No favorite. They both have about the same rating. They're both about the same strength and they like different kinds of positions. I think Ding likes it when he's a slow, methodical Karpov like and Jan likes to mix it up and play complicated, hard, hard to play chess with more errors. That's what he likes. So it just depends a lot on the form. If Ding's in top form and Jan isn't, Ding's going to win. If Jan's in top form and Ding isn't, Jan's going to win. So we have to hope that they're both in good form and the games are really good. But world championships are tough. There's a lot of pressure. Because you know if you win, unlike Magnus, you'll get another world championship match. So it's not just the prize money and the prestige, but you'll get to do it again. Whoever loses this match, that's probably it for them. Probably this is your only shot. It's like Eminem, you get one shot. And then they go in the back and throw up. They're terrible. And then mom spaghetti and all kinds of stuff like that. How much the seconds get paid? Whatever is negotiated with the players. Yeah, I'll be doing daily recaps, um, you know, during my regular stream, whenever that is. Is the match in Astana or Nur Sultan? Is that the same city and you're tricking me? Nobody knows where the match is. On the internet, it says it's in Astana. What's the other city in Kazakhstan I've heard of? There's Astana and there's another one, which I think also starts with an A. Almaty, yeah. And what happened was, this isn't a joke, there was a tournament in one of them, I'm going to say Almaty. It could be I'm reversing this. but And Hansen and his people got tickets to Astana. Then the day of they were flying, they were like, oh, it's in Almaty. They were going to like the World Rapid and Blitz or something. It might have been the other way around. So they had to get more tickets so that was funny because it wasn't me. Yeah, that was Hansen. Well, it was, I think it was like 550 kilometers. So they had to still fly, I guess, to the other city. Do Ding or Jan play the Berlin? Uh, Ding usually plays regular Rui Lopez, doesn't play the Berlin, but he can. I don't think Jan's going to play a Berlin. I think Jan will probably play Sicilian.
What's a kilometer? It's like a kilometer. That's possible mode H 1997. It's also possible the hype train's not gonna make it to level three. No, we need 50 subs a person so we can get to 1400. Where are my crazy sub givers? Come on, CL Smith, you like to give 50 subs. What's less likely, CL Smith or Bonarici give 50 subs? Discuss. Equally unlikely. Correct. No, CL Smith is more likely, I think. No, because because CL Smith, like for example, CL Smith is younger than Bonarici, so there's more chances for him to win the lottery. And then if he did, he probably would give 50 subs. Probably Bonarici would too. Like if they both had a hundred million dollars, they'd probably give 50 subs. So CL Smith has a longer period of time to win the lottery because he's like 25 years younger. And also Bonarici doesn't play the lottery. If I win the lottery, I promise to get 50 subs. Yes, it is CL Smith. By the way, CL Smith, after my colonoscopy, the doctor said, time for another colonoscopy. There was some stuff he couldn't get and some stuff he did. He said, we're going to do it in six months. Then his, his office called me the day after and tried to set up an appointment, but I didn't answer the phone. I was afraid of the doctor. There's no lottery in Alabama. God damn, what are you guys, religious? Oh, yeah, that's right. Google says it's an 18-hour drive from Astana to Almaty. Well, then it's a 1,000 kilometers. God damn. Were you on the toilet? It was who on the toilet? Do you have a safe word for your colonoscopy? No. But my endoscopy, they said everything was fine. CL Smith will sub to this stream, but give a sub. That's different. I can't imagine that happening. I'm not going to imagine it. Is there a method or principles to win? Yes. I 100% play C6, D5 against all white openings. No, that should be okay. Yeah, you can do that. That's that's one of the safest things to do against, if you're going to play the same two moves against anything, that's probably, E6 and D5 is probably tied for it. I just had a colonoscopy. Well, I had one on Thursday, and then I streamed on Friday. And the doctor said my stream might not you know, work out too well because of the colonoscopy. And I said, are we talking about chess here? And he said, what? So I don't know. Yeah, we need She Jesus. We need Deuce916 to get his mom's credit card again. There's like three or four people who give 50 subs. But, you know, they don't do it every day because, you know, that's expensive. Also, Deuce916 gave 100 subs. God damn. Thanks, Wes. Got a colonoscopy one day. The next day, I went to the ball game and saw the Braves lose. Is the Braves game going on or is it rained out? Let's have a look. Uh, let's see. Braves. The stupid. Oh, they are playing. It's not rained out. It's 2-0 Padres. Man, so the Atlanta Bra This isn't a joke. Sounds like a joke. The Atlanta Braves starting pitcher yesterday, the game that Archer and I saw, he's already put in, in AAA. He's already been relegated to AAA. <laughs> Aplexion subscribed. Hooray. Yeah, I had a, a, I had a prep that was like uh, Golightly. It was called something else, but it has a similar name. Like Go Govi Light or something. Goki Light. It was the same thing. Yeah, it doesn't taste good. It doesn't, it doesn't taste good. The doctor said, this isn't a joke either, but it sounds terrible. I hope C.L. Smith is listening to this. 
This is my best chance to get 50 subs from Steel Smith. He said, next time we do the colonoscopy, which he wants to do in six months, he wants me to fast for two days. He wants to do the prep for two days. What? Karen said she couldn't do one day. She said, there's no way I could do one day and not eat. He wants me to do the prep for two days next time. God damn. No, nah, the prep didn't taste so good. I put some lemon stuff in it they gave you to make it taste. It just tastes like you're eating sewage, drinking sewage. It, it's not so good. Yeah, two days of prep. That's what he said. And I said, no. C.L. Smith is thinking... Would I rather do two days of prep and two days of fasting or get 50 subs? Oh, snap. Yeah, I had to, I did a gallon. Yep. What did Thaddeus say? It's incorrect. Thaddeus is never incorrect. He must have been joking. Thaddeus, two days fasting isn't bad. Oh, yeah, he's incorrect about that. No, but for me, if you told me, if you said, okay, Ben, you can do two days of fasting and no prep, none of that garbage, or you, you, can, you drink the garbage, but you can eat all the time, I, I would fast for two days. I would not eat for two days. I don't like drinking that garbage. You got to drink 16 glasses. If you told me I had to drink 16 glasses two days, and then, you know, it makes you do stuff. The doing stuff, I don't mind so much, but it just tastes terrible. It's hard to drink, like, you know, 12 ounces at a time or whatever I do. Eight ounces at a time. I remember a funny story. I was playing a friend of mine one minute chess over the board. This is 35 years ago. Okay. Unless it was 36 years ago. It's one of them. And I had a glass, not a glass, but I mean, let's call it a glass, a, gl uh, a glass of iced tea that was 44 ounces. And so I said, in the one minute game, I said, I have to finish this by the time I win or I don't win. So if I checkmate him, he's, he can't resign before I drink it because that's cheating. He, if I checkmate him or his time runs out, the iced tea has to be gone. Otherwise, I don't win. He's okay. So he starts my clock. I'm white. I drank the 44 ounces, and I had like 50 seconds left, so then I just crushed him. So the drinking 44 ounces was easy, but drinking 8 ounces of the garbage is tough, and then doing it 16 times, god damn. I mean, I've, I've had worse things, but I wouldn't want to do it again. You didn't mind the taste of go lightly? I mean, the doctor gives me what he gives me and says, you have to take this. They, they feel powerful. I mean, two days, that's not nice. To, 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 to do the prep for two days, god damn. And one day sucked. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't really mind not eating. That's okay. I, I don't like drinking that stuff. His license plate? Ass man. I got it by accident. Bonarici gave a sub. It's never happened. I mean, it probably has happened, but it's pretty rare. Go Bonarici. So you're the ass man. Hey, look at this picture. See that boat? So I notice little things in TV shows that I watch that nobody notices or cares about. In Seinfeld, there's a guy who's in an episode for 10 seconds, and I thought he did a great job. He was great. 
And that's it. He's in the he's in the series for 10 seconds. It's the episode where Jerry's trying to eat healthy and he's trying to eat salads and vegetables and so forth. And they go to this, he goes to this fancy restaurant with like Elaine's friend or cousin, and they're sort of on a date, sort of. I don't know. Maybe. And it's a ste- it's a steakhouse. And the waiter comes, and the guy who plays the waiter is great. He's this big gruff guy. And he says, what would you have? And she's like, I'll have the filet mignon, and I'll have this. And he's like, what would you like? And he's like, well, do you have anything lighter? <clears throat> and he says, we have this thing, like turkey stuffed with chicken and ham. And he says, anything else? He says, well, we, he says, and he says, well, I'll just have a salad. And he goes, just a salad. Uh-huh. That, that guy who played the waiter, he was great. He should get more acting jobs. He's probably dead now. But but he was good. And don't forget it. Lawful Waffle knows what I'm talking about. My kids are older than you. They took out some polyps, but there was one he said he couldn't get, so let's have another colonoscopy. And I said, thanks. By the way, when you have a colonoscopy, you're unconscious, so it's fine. They woke me up. They said my name. I woke up. I didn't know anything happened. And I didn't feel, like, tired or anything. I didn't feel like, oh, uh, uh, I'm groggy. I just felt normal. I could have streamed that night, but they told me not to. They said, don't do anything. And I said, can I drive over the speed limit? And they said, no, don't, don't do anything. Etc. I have two children, and Karen has two children. We're like the, half of the Brady Bunch over here, or two thirds of it. Yeah, Thaddeus is right. What was my biggest win? Well, when I was 340, I won a chess game, but that was pretty big. My biggest win, I mean, the best player I ever beat was Mama Jara, but that was in a rapid game online. So, you know, that's not, you know, that's. That's the best I can do, is wrap it online. The best slow game in a real game, I beat a lot of people who are in the 2,600 fee days, but I've only played one person who was 2,700 fee day when I played them. Because 20, 30, 40 years ago, nobody was 2,700 fee day. And that was Jeffrey Zhang, and he just beat me easily. But a lot of players in the 2,600 fee days I've beaten, and they're all about the same strength. Joel Benjamin, Nick DeFermian, Jan Elvest, Gregory Kaidenov, uh, Yer Malinsky, uh, Ep- Apishin, Epishin. Yeah, in fact, Epishin told me like 30 years ago he was going to have a colonoscopy, but they wouldn't let him. And he said, why can't I have a colonoscopy? And he said, if you have a colonoscopy, then you'll, you'll, you'll be a shittin' and you're a pishin'. So they wouldn't let him do it. And that's like half a joke. I've never beaten Fedorowicz. We played twice and we drew quickly both times. I've never beaten Judah Polgar in a slow game, but I beat her in a rapid game over the board in like 1988. It's not live. This is recorded, and I don't know whose turn it is. This this game, it's White's move. White plays Queen takes King. You want to see my game with Gelfand? Oh, snap. Nobody wants to see my game with Gelfand. Gelfand was only like 2,500 feet day when I beat him, but he was 4-0 in the tournament, and he was crushing it. What's the lowest level you've beat? What? Highest rated draw? I don't know. I mean, I, again, everybody's in the high 2600s. A lot of people that I've beaten and drawn, like Anand and Karawana, you know, they weren't they weren't Anand and Karawana yet. You know what I mean? You know, because we're old. I played Karawana when he was 11. And <clears throat> I, I drew Anand when we were 16. 
I mean, you know, it was a long time ago. I don't get to play top 10, 20 players in the world because I'm no good. When I was good, like in the 90s, people's ratings weren't as high then. So if I played somebody really good, they were 2650 feet A. Like back in the 70s, nobody was 2700 feet A, just Fisher. So I didn't play people with super high ratings when I was a good player because nobody had those ratings. And now I don't play them because I'm no good. So thanks, Fen Beingold. No, Queen Takes King is good. Also, there's B5 mate, Rook A1 mate, Rook B2 mate, Rook B3 mate, Rook, Rook mate. G4 is not mate because the King Takes Queen. All Knight moves are not mate. All Queen moves are not mate. H4, H3, King... There's a lot of mate and ones here. It's true. Go west. All right, let's get my rating up. Leave site. I don't want to leave the site. I just want to go here. Okay, I'll leave the site. Fine. Thanks, Wes. What's the lowest elo you've beaten on chess.com? I guess 100. What is my rating? 2716. Okay, road to 2725. We are on a road to nowhere. Moldova. We are on a road to nowhere. We It's my game with Smyslov and I think Ron Burnett too but definitely Smyslov from 1988 Lloyd's Bank. I don't think Smithsloff played that. Although he may have. I didn't lose on time yet. Hey, if I win this game on 27-25, I made the road to 27-25 in one game if I win. Hooray. Go, Ben. Whose pawn structure is worse and why? I have an extra minute. I like my position a lot. Let's see. Takes. I guess I should take this.
Yay. The road to 27-25. I made it in one game. It says I made zero mistakes and zero blunders and zero good moves. Maybe I should play in the World Championship. I played 88.5 and he played 83.4. It says I'm 29.50 and he's 27.50. What's the evaluation of the final position? Let's see. Plus 6.65. That's a good evaluation. Is this winning or is F5 check draw? I think King F4 is the draw. No, this is a draw. That's what I thought. I think it's winning if it's my move. I think this is winning. Yeah, this is winning. But if it's king's here and he plays f5, it's a draw. Yeah, he plays here to play f5. I win with this. All right, well, he wants a rematch. And I owe him a rematch because I was white. I guess he forgot he wanted a rematch. Yeah, I'm playing like that guy, C6, D5. By giving all my pawns away, I have a better pawn structure. I mean pawns, but you know, what are you going to do?
Yay, thanks, Big Daddy. Yay. It says I made zero mistakes and zero blunders again. I don't believe that. I'm sure I was lost. <laughs> That's better than I played a couple of days ago, or three days ago, whenever I lost all my games. 85.3, and he played 86.1. One blunder, six mistakes. A5 double question mark. Isn't this a dead draw? <laughs> it says I'm 2850 and he's 2900. Thanks, Big Daddy. One bit. Prediction pain. Yay, I'm still 2725. Hooray for Ben. All right, let's see, try to lose some rating points here. Yeah, I went from like 2785 to 2715 in one stream. Although the first guy I accused of cheating, but I never got any points back. So probably he wasn't cheating. Just way better than me. Everybody else who beat me I thought was fair and square. The first guy didn't feel right. The other people just felt like I play bad and I lose. We So it's eight hours and 15 minutes till the world championship match starts. I'll be doing recaps every day, but I won't do anything live unless I just can't sleep when I'm up. Then I might as well come do something live. You know, come in my underwear. That'll get more views. We. Magnus retains his title. Wes with three bits. All right, who's gonna give me? Who's gonna give me fifty subs? Let's get to fourteen hundred. Come on, Bonarici and CL Smith. You can both do it. Me, me. Let's see. Brazil, yeah. My chances of winning are one in a Brazilian. Yay, thanks, Wes. Five subs. Hooray. Go, Wes, young man. All right, we're only 91 subs away. G5 went a piece. No. Yay, thanks, Wes. You're the best, Wes, except for my friend, Wes.
1,309 subscribers. if Karen's watching because I know she wasn't feeling well she might be in bed let's see bishop there gotta move my queen I guess there did I get mated yet not yet right. I'm trying to get mated by giving him such a good position, you have to think a long time to figure out how to maximize it. And then I went on time. I'm a genius. Unless I get crushed, which is likely. He's like, F4 is good, FG is good. And then, and then I went on time. Yeah, the truth hurts. Yeah, that looks good. I just lose immediately? Damn. It's unfortunate. Hey, he just takes that too. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm the best. Wow, I played really bad that game. That's how I played two, three days ago. Lost without any fight. If I win this game, am I 27 25 again? Yes, exactly. Or I play better this game and not so bad, etc. Man, this is like the game that I showed on stream today with Ding and Nepo. With the knight here and then here and then you let him take it, and so forth. They didn't take it. Oh, the black lost that game. Darn. If I trade pieces, I won't lose as much material. I'll still lose material, but not as much because I traded everything. So that's good. I can't hang like a rook and a knight and a queen because I trade all the pieces. I'm only down a pawn. That's the most I could hope for. I get 30 seconds compensation. And I have more open files because I have no pawns. Yes. Brilliant strategy. Tempting me to play Rook B2 no matter how bad it is. It was tempting though. Yay, big time advantage. Not only a pawn down.
question. I didn't even see Queen G5. Darn. I just didn't see these moves. Jesus Christ. I thought you could take and I play here and I'm winning. <laughs> what an idiot. Yeah, I gotta play slower when they're checkmating me. Never play F6. I can't play king h8, he takes, and plays queen e7. Come on, play for the win. I don't mind losing, I just don't want to draw. But I can't play king h8, I can mate it. Oh, well, he doesn't want to win. Darn. I don't blame him, because his time situation was bad. God, I just get crushed every game on the same line. I always lost immediately. Damn. <sighs> I'll give him more than one way to win. That'll confuse him. That's so embarrassing. <clears throat> Yeah, it's worse than the other game. Just like that guy, c6, then d5.
Oh my god, I forgot this was made. <laughs> what an idiot. Ugh. Important thing was I played really fast. Yeah, why do I play so bad? I want to play better. Shouldn't be hard to play better. Can't play worse. Man, playing bad like three days ago. I want to play good like three weeks ago.
Yeah, I won a game. No, we're off Chess TV. Ooh. All right, if I win this game, the stream is over. And then I'll see you guys tomorrow night for the recap of the match game. Stop the game, it's too exciting. This doesn't look very good. I mean, unless you're white, then it looks pretty good.
Yay, I'm the best. Just not at chess or anything else. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the stream and so forth and enjoyed the games. Well, not my games, but the games between the good players. And I'll see you tomorrow with a recap. Go, Ding. Go, Nepo. Go, everybody. Let's see. Hassan, XQC, Fisher, Kasparov. Just chatting, just chatting, just chatting, just chatting. All right. I'll do one that's playing chess or says that they're playing chess. Have a good night. Have a good